not on your heads on the desk, please. I never thought I'd have to say that in the class. Perfect. Good morning, gentlemen. All right, so we are starting integers today. And before we start integers, we're going to have a little bit of recap on numbers. So we have talked about it before. If you were to invent numbers, make up numbers, why would you need to make up numbers? Like, why do you think maths was invented in the first place or discovered? I don't know which uh, is more appropriate. Yes? To count things. To count things. What things would people have needed to count in the past? Sheep. Sheep? Yep, number of people in the tribe. Money. Money, some kind of money. Yes. What else? Number of siblings you have, number of kids you have. Yes, number of people died in a war, sadly. Yep, how many loaves of bread do you have? Right. Yes. How many items of something you have? Exactly, how many items of something you have? I think we've got enough examples now. What time is it? That's important, yes. How many hours have passed? So maybe. So when people came up with the idea of counting, let's say you were the smartest person who came up, came up with, you know, a number system. What would be the first number you, could have, you would have thought of? Because you're counting things. One. One. That makes sense, doesn't it? One. How many sheep I have? One. Okay, I've got another one. Now I have two. I've got another one. Now I have three. So the number system that was originally started, what they were called natural numbers. And naturally, it made sense that they started from one. Right? So the number system we had, it was called the Arabic uh, number system. And then a smart Indian man called, I told you this before. No, no, unfortunately it wasn't me. Maybe I was, uh, I'm reincarnated as me now and I was him. He invented the number zero. Yeah, he gave the world the number zero and his name was Arabhat. So the great Indian mathematician, he gave the world the number zero and he was a Hindu just like me. So the number system that we have now is called the Hindu Arabic number system. And those numbers were called whole numbers. So we had zero now. Why do you think a smart man would feel the need of having zero? What, what, what would have made him think, you know, there is a number missing? Because what if you didn't have anything, what would you say? Exactly. What if you didn't have anything? How would you say? So how many sheep do you have? I have none. What number is that? I don't know. There is no number of that. Let's make one up. Zero. Does that make sense? So that's how people started thinking about numbers and number system. So the whole number, uh, natural numbers were naturally, you know, one, two, three, four, then whole numbers, zero was added. Why are they called whole numbers? Can you think of, an, uh, of a reason why? Yep. Because each number is a certain amount of entire things. Exactly. It's a whole. It's not half of something or three quarters of something, is it? No, it is a whole number. It's a whole item. You either have one sheep or you don't. You either have two sheep or you have none. Like there's no two and a half sheep. And why? Because again, the counting was started, hopefully, just to count things, right? Then we had rational numbers. What are those? We've done them. Fractions. Because people realize, you know, what if you have, um, you know, what could you have one and a half of? Don't say sheep. Apples. Let's say you have one and a half apples. So you know, we were like, what number do we use that? It's not one, it's not two, it's somewhere in between. So we came up with rational numbers, fractions. Again, then we, you know, again, the Indians gave us the decimal system. So decimals came into place as well, which again represent numbers that are not whole. Then we had another problem. You know, maths is all about problems and solving those problems. So we came, let's say you are... I was going to say. <laughs> All right, let's say we are in a building with a basement in, right? Or, you know, underground car parks we have nowadays. Yes. So let's say the ground level is the zero level, right? Yes. If you were to use a number to represent your position and you are at the second floor of the building, what number would you use to represent your position from the ground? Yeah, two. two. Does that make sense? Which level are you on? Two. Two. If you are on the fourth level, what would you represent? Uh, what number would you use to represent your position? Four. Four, right? 
If you were at the ground level, zero. But the problem is, what if I'm in the basement? Negative. One level below the ground level. Negative one. Exactly. So we needed numbers that were less than zero. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's when integers came into the picture. Again, integers aren't halves or three quarters. And we don't talk when I'm talking because I get annoyed. Uh, integers, again, are whole. They're not called whole numbers. Whole numbers start from zero. But integers are not, uh, they're negative numbers. They're on the left of the zero on the number line. But why would we need numbers less than zero? So one example I've given you if you're in a building which has levels below ground level, so you can use negative numbers. Where else? To tell the temperature. Yep, temperature. So we've set the standard that the temperature with which water freezes is zero degrees. Anything below that it would be a negative temperature. More examples, please. Um, when you're in debt, will you earn money? Yes, when you're in debt. So let's say all if you've had a loss. So for example, I invest in hundred dollars. And after six months, I got a $20 return on it. So what was my profit? Plus 20. What if someone, you know, then I had a loss on it for some reason. So, and I lost $30. So what would be my profit now? Negative 30. So you can use plus positive and negative numbers to represent profits and losses. Yes? Like gambling, how much money you make and lose? Yep, same thing. Profit and loss in gambling, which you should not do. I love gambling. Well, I'll tell you the maths of it. No one wins. It's the machines who win. So don't gamble. Okay. Yes? How many meters you are below sea level? Well done. Another great example. Below the sea level. So if the sea level is zero, if something's two meters above the sea level, it'll be positive two meters. If something's five meters below the sea level, the position would be <laughs> negative five. All great examples. So position above and below sea level, position in a building where ground level is zero and you've got underground as well. Uh, so we've done temperature. So does that make sense? Where you, we would use uh, integers? Yes? Do integers have halves and three quarters and stuff? No. But are they called whole numbers? No. Okay? Natural numbers start from 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on. Whole numbers start from 0. zero. 1, 2, 3, 4. Rational numbers are fractions. Is 1 a rational number? No. No. Yes. It is. Can yeah, someone yeah. tell me, can one be written as a fraction? Yeah. Two twos or, two twos or three threes or one over one. So all of these are rational numbers as well. Anything that can be written as a fraction, which you should know by now, we've done like three weeks of work on rational numbers. So rational numbers, anything that can be written as a fraction. All right, now let's focus on integers. So integers, they have zero in the middle. They have whole numbers on this side. Why have I put this dot, 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 or dash, 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 dash? Yeah. Can't hear you? No, no, I need to hear. I think what you said was right. Have another go. Okay, maybe we don't know the numbers. That could be. What else? Uh, it could be that you just want like the numbers to keep going, but you don't want to like, use Do them. I want them to keep going or they actually keep, they going? keep going? Infinite. Infinite. They keep going. They never end. Can you tell me what's the largest possible number? You give me a number and I can add one to it and give you the next number. Have you ever thought of that? That fascinated me as a little girl when my dad told me, you know, numbers never end. I was like, no, I'll give you a really big number. And he said, I'll add one to it. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'll give you that number. And he said, I'll add one to that. So numbers never end. Does that make sense? My daughter's, yeah, she's confused about it. I think she's too young. So numbers go on. So we, I can't write all the positive integers, can I? No. So what do we call where the numbers end, kind of? You mentioned that word. Infinity. We just say infinity. But this infinity is not a particular number because technically numbers don't end. Make sense? So that's why I use dash, dash, dash. Then to the left of zero we have negative integers. Does that make sense? So on a number line, we can write integers on a number line. Zero is the kind of the middle. Positive numbers are to the right of zero on the number line. Negative numbers are to the left of zero on the number line. So, these are 
positive integers. Right? These are negative integers. What is zero then? Is zero a positive integer? No. No. Is it a negative integer? It's special. It's just Indian. It's, it's Indian. It's special. It's like we are special. Yeah, we're all special. So remember, zero is neither positive nor negative. We never write a sign with zero. No plus zero, no minus zero. It's just zero. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, one more thing that you need to understand for integers is, on a number line, as we go to the right, are the numbers increasing? Yes. yes. So if we go to the left of a number line, the numbers are? Decreasing. So any positive number, let's say 2, is it greater than negative 4? Yes. yes, because you check the position. 2 lies to the right of negative 4, so it must be bigger. One fascinating thing. As the number, the, if a negative integer, if there's a negative integer, as the number here gets bigger, but negative 4 is actually smaller than negative 3, isn't it? Because negative 4 is on the left of negative 3 on the number line. Does that make sense? So for positive numbers, you know which one's bigger, right? 4 is bigger than 3, 5 is greater than 4, 100 would be greater than 90. But with negative numbers, it's the opposite. The bigger the number, but it's negative, so it'll be smaller because it'll be to the left. Does that make sense? So let's do a couple of examples. So if you have a positive and a negative integer, seriously. If you have a positive and a negative integer, without even thinking, the positive one will be bigger. bigger. Doesn't even matter what the number is. Okay? If we have zero and a negative integer, without thinking, negative will be smaller. Right? Yes? Now, if they're both positive, seriously, if you don't know that in year seven, you are pray for you. So, does that make sense? Yes? Now, if they're both negative, then it's the opposite. 150, because it's negative, it's smaller than negative 100. So, when there's a minus sign, the bigger the number, the smaller it is. Make sense? That is all you need to know about integers for now. We'll continue on with adding and subtracting.